What you just saw was entirely AI. There was nothing real in there whatsoever. Everything was created using Artlist AI, along with the following commercials that are shown. AI can make ads for so many different things. It could be a fake car commercial, a high-end luxury bag spot, a dramatic sunglasses ad, or even a product that doesn't exist at all. AI can make all of it look cinematic, polished, and expensive. And you can save time and money creating ads and commercials like this using AI tools. And the funny thing is that sculpture, the subject, exists in real life. This is Oswald, everybody. Say hello to Oswald. He's got some money in there. He's like a piggy bank. So we decided to see if we could put Oswald into a commercial and make him a luxury item. Oswald is a little dusty, so I'm taking him out and giving him a little wipe down so he's nice and sparkly, spick and span. And then I set him out on the table and then just took a few pictures with my iPhone. I wasn't able to get quite the angles that I wanted, so instead I put him on the floor and then had my wife Ashley shine a flashlight on him. And then I took some more iPhone pictures. Please hit subscribe for more cinematic experiences and breakdowns, as well as more AI filmmaking tips and tutorials. And by the way, Artlist is having a holiday sale right now where you can save up to 40% off any AI annual plan or 20% off for the max annual plan. You do not want to miss out. So how did we actually make this happen? Let's start from the beginning. Let's begin with the ideation process. Now, what I found the most helpful is to actually find image references for the kind of style that you're trying to go for. Now, I wanted a really high end, minimalistic, luxury, cinematic film look. So I took some stills from a commercial that's really inspired me recently and used that as some of the inspiration for the images that we're about to create. So I made a folder called stills and I have two folders inside of there. One is reference stills from this commercial and you can see what I found inspiring. And then the other folder I made is iPhone stills. And you can see some of the images that I took in here. These were the first images that I took on the floor. Step one is generating images. So I started generating images with Nano Banana. Also, Nano Banana Pro might be out by the time the video goes live. Make sure to check it out. I would upload a picture of Oswald and then upload a reference image and type in something like this. Replace the object from the second image with the object from the first image. The final image should look like the second image. That way, the final image looked similar to my reference image. But the only difference is Oswald is in the image. So this technique worked really well for all kinds of close-up shots. But one thing I was running into was the lighting didn't match. So a lot of my reference images had very huge sources of light, very soft lighting, very glowy and cinematic. And what I did was shoot pictures of Oswald with an iPhone flash. Not good. The lighting did not match at all. I got some kind of bad results like this. So I had to go back to the drawing board and reshoot Oswald with the same lighting. Now, luckily in my dining room, I have these big windows and I could put some curtains in front of them for diffusion. And I set Oswald down and shot him from four different angles with backlighting. And then I went sideways and shot him from all four different angles again. Then I did a top down angle and then also some close up macro shots for some detail shots that I was planning later. Then I went back and did the same technique where I uploaded the soft lighting image of Oswald and my reference image and generated a ton of images that way. That looked really great. Now, sometimes when I generated images in this way by just combining the two images, they looked way too similar to the reference image and it kind of felt like copying. Now, we don't want to get too similar. We want to take inspiration from things. We don't want to copy. So in order to get around that, I employed ChatGPT. I uploaded my reference image and said, can you write a prompt for this image? And it would give me a detailed prompt describing what it saw in the reference image. Then I went back to Artlist, went to text to image and generated a multi-purpose image as well as a photorealistic image. Sometimes it took a few tries, but oftentimes I would get a still image that looked pretty similar to the vibe that I was going for. Then I did the same technique as before, except I used the image that I just generated as my reference image. And I would say, take this image of Oswald, put it in my reference image, and maybe potentially replace an object in my reference image, like a vase or like some other piece of decoration with Oswald and I would do that with Nano Banana. So basically with those two techniques, I was able to generate all the images that I needed in order to create the commercial. 
Now, fine tuning the images. Sometimes I would generate images and they would look a little too similar to my dining room where I actually took the photos with my iPhone. And so I would take the image I generated put it into Nano Banana and tell it to change the lighting, whether it was make the background dark, change the lighting to studio lighting, you know, darken it a little bit so it would look more cinematic as if it was shot on a soundstage and not in my dining room. I tried to make sure to get a pretty good shot variety. So we had wide shots, we had super close up macro shots, we had straight on shots, profile shots, pretty much anything I could think of. And then just to add a little bit of texture, I did some macro shots of plants and flowers just to throw in there. Next up, it's time to animate the images. And because you can do image generation and animation at the same time, I was kind of doing everything that I'm describing to you at once. I was animating stuff, generating prompts in ChatGPT, combining images of Oswald and just generating everything all at once. It was a chaotic mess. All you have to do in Artlist is go to the image you wanna animate and click animate. And then Artlist will give you a prompt by default. Now the default prompt from Artlist always had Oswald spinning 360 or the camera was moving 360 and there was just a lot going on. And this commercial, I wanted to be very minimalistic and high end. And so that required a lot of static shots. Also, Artlist sometimes wanted to animate Oswald. So the clay sculpture would be like moving and like bobbing the head and stuff. It looked kind of silly, but it was a good laugh. There are also some quite interesting generations that look like this, you know, good for the blooper reel. <laughs> so my animation strategy was this. Because the sculpture can't really move, and I didn't really want the camera to move, the only thing that we could add to add motion and liveliness to the frame was actually just changing the lighting. So I wanted everything to stay the same, but wanted the lighting to change, whether it was the background lighting or a harsh light moving around the subject or onto the background. And that created a ton of life and it looks really good. Most of the shots either had slight rotational movement, a slight zoom in, or were completely static. Because of that limitation, everything looked way more cohesive. There was one shot where I really liked the lighting. I liked the way the image turned out. And so I actually put that image into Nano Banana and asked it to give me a macro close up with the exact same lighting from a similar angle. And it gave me this, which was really cool. Sometimes the still would look completely like Oswald, but once I started animating it, especially if there was rotation, it would make up the back of Oswald and it wouldn't look like him whatsoever. He would have a tail or wings or something like that because he's kind of shaped like a duck. I don't know if he's a duck or a platypus. Like we, we still don't know. For the vast majority of these animations, I used the Kling 2.1 model. Most of the reason why I used it is because if you actually go to the AI video homepage and you look at all the generations that other people have made, the vast majority of these were made with the Kling 2.1 model and they really impressed me. So I was like, you know what, I'm gonna go with that. I also tried VO3, I tried Sora 2, Sora 2 Pro, Seed Dance, there was a big variety. But the one that I used the most, Kling 2.1. The important part to remember is you are a curator. So AI is gonna spit out a bunch of stuff that is not good, it's not usable. And the same thing happens when you're editing, when you're filming. You gotta think like a filmmaker and understand what is good and what isn't. Your taste is very important. So remember, AI can generate frames. It can generate all kinds of stuff, but only a filmmaker can create a feeling through the frames for the audience. And to do that, you really need cohesion. And that takes us to the editing. The first part of the editing for me oftentimes is picking the song. So I went to Artlist, went to music and typed in ambient synth. I wanted something that was a little bit electronic, but also very high end luxury, nothing with a crazy beat. And after a little bit of digging, I found this track. Dreamers by Yodam Agam. It's the perfect blend of strings, synth, tiny bit of electronics in there. And it screamed luxurious. <laughs> Next, I edited the music into a little 15 second clip. I found a chunk that I liked, faded it out. And I also took a little bit from the end that kind of sounded like mm, and exponential faded it up. So it went and that was the ending. I thought it sounded pretty great. And then next up was the editing. One thing I like to do is look at all my clips in a string out and start to make pairs. It's almost like the matching game. So I took similar framings or similar lighting and try to put them together. Because the light is mostly what was animating, I was finding little match cuts of the light moving across the screen and then finding another shot where the light was again 
animating or moving across the screen. Put those two shots together and then it felt like one seamless cut. Another thing I did was find match cuts. There's one shot in here that actually looks like there's not even a cut because just the lighting changes, but it's actually just a perfect match cut of two shots together because they were the exact same framing. There's also a, a recent Kendrick Lamar Luther video that I saw that was shot on film that had this vertical light streaking movement to it. So I took a shot duplicated on top of itself, added directional blur, and then animated the blur length up and down, put it on the blend mode of screen, and it looks very, very similar to that streaky emulation in Kendrick Lamar Luther. It's probably one of my favorite parts of this edit. And I did that streakiness across about two or three clips, which helped blended them all together and create a match cut in that moment. And then my thought process was this. I wanted to start with fast cuts and then next do macro close-ups so you can't quite see what Oswald is. You're just teasing the texture. You're teasing that it's a clay object. And then later on in the video, around the midpoint, we reveal Oswald in all his glory, a full shot. I put some film burns in there, which really, really help emulate film because there's all kinds of flashes and little punch hole transitions. If you ever edit with real film, that's what it looks like. And you can't have some film burns or fast cuts without sound. So I added pretty much some subtle little clicky sounds into those moments and a few whooshes on key fast transitions as well. And then lastly, I honestly flipped through my fonts and this was the second font I found and I thought it looked absolutely amazing. A little all lowercase tiny logo at the end. Just call it Oswald and it looks so freaking luxurious. I was like, oh my goodness, I got lucky with that one. And that's pretty much it. Oswald has his own super freaking luxury commercial. Now I will say, if you look very closely at a few of these shots, his form changes a little bit. It's hard to keep the object consistency 100% perfect. But if this was a real commercial, I'd probably just keep regenerating those shots until it got better and better. I was on a time crunch for this one and most people wouldn't notice. I do just wanna make you aware of that as you're generating shots for physical products. Make sure they look exactly the same. Brick. This is nuts, dude. This is actually crazy. How expensive do you think that commercial would be? I also can't tell that that's AI. Because of how grainy it is and how film emulate it is, it looks freaking real. I will say, most AI up to this point, you can kind of tell, but this is the first one that I've made where I'm like, frick. That looks real as, wow. That looks real as frick. That was sick. So that's it. I think that looks pretty luxurious. That little sculpture that my brother-in-law made in art class now looks like a $5,000 luxury item. Pretty crazy. So if this inspired you, please subscribe for more cinematic experiments like this with AI, as well as AI filmmaking tutorials. Every single shot was 100% AI, every emotion created with Artlist. So remember, don't miss out on the holiday sale. If this inspired you, Please subscribe, we're gonna do more videos like this, more experiments, more cinematic content with AI. And remember, even though it's AI, craft still matters, beauty still matters, emotion still matters, so go out and tell some great stories.